You're listening to The Coffee Hour. I'm Andy Bates. I'm Sarah Golseth. Thanks to Concordia University, Wisconsin for supporting The Coffee Hour. Find out more about Concordia University, Wisconsin at cuw.edu. Live Uncommon. So hopefully you've had a chance to take a look at the May issue of The Lutheran Witness. A great article in there this month on sharing the gospel on social media. Joining us today, Seth Hins. He's Director of Brand Marketing and Creative at Pathfinder Church and St. John School in Ellisville, Missouri, and author of Sharing the Gospel on Social Media in this month's issue of The Lutheran Witness. Seth, thanks so much for joining us on The Coffee Hour. Guys, it's a pleasure to be with you. Thanks for having me. So I guess it's kind of always fun to ask the guy who's in charge of social media, why do we use social media? Um, that's not trying to justify your job, but uh, why why do we as, as people, as a society, or even as Christians, why do we use social media? Oh, that's a good question. I feel like I could come at it from so many different ways. Um, mm-hmm. Probably from a gut level, we use social media just because we're looking for some entertainment, um, probably an escape um, uh, you know, we're looking for, uh, you know, and then the next level of it is we're really looking for connection. Um, we're trying to put thoughts and ideas out there that, uh, resonate with people that we can find people who agree with us. We can find people who think like us, or we can find people who are interested in the same things as us. Uh, we want to know, uh, at a heart level that we're not alone. And I think that's what social media ultimately gets down to. Um, we've, we've seen you social media used for a lot of different purposes, um, but I think at, at the heart of it and why I always go back to it, even when I get frustrated and uh, bogged down by the, the kind of exchanges that may happen on social media, I keep going back to it because I think people see, are seeking connection. And I think that's that's where we have a place. That's where we can step in as Lutherans and, and share the good news. Mm-hmm. How do we work through that uh, frustration and <laughs> anger that we so often feel <laughs> on social media to uh, to build relationships, to kind of navigate through that, to find those places where we can have positive interactions? That's a great question. Um, I, I think you always need to find balance for yourself. So you can't stay plugged in all the time. I think that's where we get into trouble is that we get connected and we stay connected all the time and we forget to take a breath um, and realize uh, what's right in front of us uh, in in so-called the real world um, offline. Um, What we need to remember is that when we go in, there are opportunities um, not just to go express opinions and use a megaphone on social media, uh, which is sometimes the temptation is to say, I can go on and and share a quick Bible verse and it's going to encourage somebody, or I can go in and have a quick retort on a conversation that I don't really have any context in, but I can share the good news and drop it and walk away and, uh, and the word will work. Um, and sometimes those, I I just see them doing more harm than good. That's not to say that they can't, can't be helpful in the long run. Um, but I, I try to encourage people to start with their interests, start with things that they wouldn't think, uh, they could find connection and community around on social media. They want to Show, share Jesus with everyone they come encounter encounter with, but God gives us unique interests and skills and passions and and regions, and we should find uh, ways to connect in those. Whether that's gardening, or whether that's you're really into cars, or whether that's you're living in West St. Louis, um, there are Facebook groups that exist for all those things, and I think we can connect in different ways. That you start relationships on a very foundational level, just like here's things we have in common. Let's start there. Let's start exchanging ideas and conversations and then see where it goes from there to jump ahead uh, in a conversation then to provide like a gospel proclamation sometimes uh, people aren't ready for that <laughs> and they're not they don't know you and uh, so I feel like we we have to do the the hard work and sometimes the slow work of building relationships and I really feel like social media gives you the opportunity to connect around, the things that you already love and find people who love those things too and start relationships that way. I appreciate that you point out the the temptation to just jump right in or just to, to use it as a megaphone and to, to blast something out there. I, I was just thinking about the comparison of the, or the contrast really of how, how sometimes social media and things, uh, resources on the internet can seem so instantaneous. Um, that's just kind of the nature of social media, but yet you mentioned doing the hard work and the slow work of, of building relationships. How do you resist that temptation to, to <laughs> jump in like to, well, because of all the, the instantaneous nature of social media, how do you resist that temptation 
to always be, I guess, one information overload or just gushing information as well. Uh, <laughs> how do you face that temptation and and then place and then spend more time, as, as you said, in the hard work and the the slow work of of engaging and building relationships? That is that is a really hard question, a really great question, <laughs> um, because I think that we all struggle with that. Yeah. I mean, my greatest friend is the delete button. Like I, I there's <laughs> yes. many, many responses that I type out and you finally get to the end of that, you know, fourth sentence and your fifth paragraph. And you're like, you know what, actually, this is not going to be helpful to our relationship. This isn't going to be furthering. This is just going to be, I, I don't, I've rarely seen opinions change on large issues uh, through exchanges on social media. And I have to remind myself of that time and time again. And I think that comes with time on social media and just seeing how people interact and how minds change and how often they don't change. And so you have to admit to yourself, like, I'm, I don't know if I'm going to be able to move the needle in this interaction. What would be better in this situation? Um, maybe just a like, or maybe just an acknowledgement, or maybe a private message and connect with them in that way that takes it to the next level. So for me, it's, it's being aware, um, and saying to myself, like, I, I have to be really cognizant of what I'm going to put out there as a response to somebody else's opinion. And I have to say, what's more valuable for the relationship long term? Um, and those are really hard things. I've, I've deleted many posts that I, that I was thinking about posting. And then I'm just like, I, you have to admit what's good and what's not. And then you have to, you have to make routines for yourself. Um, when I say it takes it's slow, long work, there's things that you can do, uh, routines you can put into your uh, your system or your calendar or whatever. Um, so maybe every morning you, you give yourself a habit or a challenge that says, I'm going to go into my feed and I'm going to co comment on 10 people's posts um, as long as they're, you know, focused on maybe something that they're passionate about or something that they care about. You know, if it's a picture of their family, you'll say, I, I love this picture. Your family looks great. You know, something that's um, you're putting a habit in place that one is positive Two, you're showing somebody on the other end that you care enough to not scroll past what they're sharing in the world. You're uh, signaling to them that this is the kind of content that people want like to engage with. Um, and so you're kind of reinforcing people sharing positive content as well as connecting with them and showing them that you, you posted this thing, you shared this idea and this photo and you aren't alone. You are seen, you are loved. And I'm willing to take the time to comment on that. It's the small interactions that add up. Mm -hmm. And the more that you do that, uh, hopefully the algorithm, <laughs> the magical <laughs> algorithm sees those things. And that's the kind of content that you end up getting more of in your feed, which is a nice change uh, to, to see more of that than the stuff that might make you uh, more angry. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. How, what, how, do we, how do we consider um, what's important as we build these relationships and look for places to share the gospel, what do we, what do we consider um, when we're looking for those, those types of interactions as we build these good routines, these good habits of commenting positively on people's posts? You know, what I, what I look for, and sometimes I notice, is the more that you stay connected with people, say you, you make that habit 10 specific people, and you may even make a bookmarks list or some kind of list where you're able to track those 10 people, you're able to start to see their behavior and what they're going through, you know, from their highs to their lows. And you're able to come in with opportunities to not only comment on their posts, but you could take it that step further and in private message, maybe they, they share a post that's kind of out of character for them. You know, it's not not a post that's a picture of their family again, but a, maybe a wondering post or a post where they say they need prayer or something like that, but you're paying attention to other people's lives so that when those opportunities present themselves, when they're struggling, you, you're there for them and you can say, message them, send them a private message direct to them that says, how can I specifically pray for you today? How, how can I be helpful to you today? Um, and then it's in a way that if they are willing, you know, to open themselves to that, that you are also saying, you know, I noticed a couple weeks ago, you shared a picture about this. And they feel cared for and they feel seen in that moment 
because you're you're following them. You care about their lives, um, and so staying attuned to that presents you know those opportunities are going to present themselves, and you won't always see it as black and white, kind of like oh I need prayer, but you're going to start to see people's uh, ebbs and flows as you pay attention more. Two takeaways, well, three takeaways that I've <laughs> I have from from today's conversation. One, my best friend is the delete button. That's a good relationship <laughs> to have. <laughs> Two, slow your scroll. Uh, <laughs> uh, yep. Instead of just scrolling through, pay attention to especially the the, the people that you're you're wanting to engage with. And three, and I guess this should really be number one, is um, have a plan before using social media about okay. how you're going to use it in your daily routine. Have a plan, and that plan, uh, it, what part of that plan, or how does that plan um, impact relationships? I, I guess is is the the main takeaway that that i've gotten from this all right um final thoughts uh what do you want to leave us with today seth as uh, certainly we, we want to encourage our listeners to go check out the article your article in this month's uh, issue of the lutheran witness but uh, final thoughts on using social media for sharing the gospel yeah um my final thought would just be you know and somebody commented on the article online already and i thought it was a great thought you know um God can work through all things. God can work through our smallest comment, a like button. God can work through so many different things. Um, so yes, it can. The gospel can be shared in a one-off comment. Absolutely. My encouragement to everybody is is that I feel like we're all in this moment where we're searching for connection and reconnection, and the only way to really do that is is to do the hard, slow work, as I mentioned, of paying attention to other people's lives and, and watching what they're going through so that you can have those online to offline moments where even if you if you see the person on Sundays, you're able to strike up that conversation and show them that you care about what they're doing. Like, I saw you post that thing. That was awesome. I loved it. Um, it's just being really intentional. And I think the relationships that you build through that time are going to, I don't, I don't want to say pay off, but I think they're going to make a bigger impact on those people. And I think that's what we're we're called to do in that space is to bring light, to bring hope uh, to a place that can often be divisive. So I would just encourage people to, uh, as I said in the article, I, I hope that our Luth- as Lutherans, we're so known to for our presence, you know, not, not mm-hmm. for maybe doom and gloom or anything like that, but n- known for just bringing hope for people that live lives of hope. And we can do that through social media. Our guest today, Seth Hens, he's Director of Brand, Marketing, and Creative at Pathfinder Church in St. John's School in Ellisville, Missouri. Seth, thanks so much for being our guest on The Coffee Hour today. Thank you. You've been listening to The Coffee Hour. I'm Eddie Bates. I'm Sarah Gilseth. 